the president and CEO of Toronto 2015. He comes to this position uniquely qualified with a mix of business and sports background. He has been described in many ways. <clears throat> Multinational business builder with a high degree of passion for sport. He has worked locally and internationally for such luminaries as Procter & Gamble, Can Agra Foods, and the giant pen fund conglomerate, Omers. Ladies and gentlemen, please give our speaker a very warm Canadian welcome and let's give Ian Troop, the guy who's gonna make this all come together for us and fulfill our dreams. <laughs> the man who has no pressure whatsoever. None. Ian Troop, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Joe, for that introduction. And also, I'd like to thank you for the service you've provided to Toronto 2015. Your commitment during the bid, and I hope you all realize, his commitment for the bid and during the bid was one of the reasons that we're here talking today. I also want to recognize the tremendous work of the Diversity Business Network. Your success speaks for itself, but also you've gone above and beyond today. This is a great turnout despite the inclement weather, and the attendance is testimony to the strength of your connections to your members. The sponsors of today's event have also stepped forward in a big way, so congratulations and thank you all. With everything from web streaming to the performance by Alan Frew this afternoon, Courtney Betty and his colleagues with the network have done a fantastic job of gathering this whole thing together. I'd like to take a few moments to mention a couple of interesting connections with Courtney. His son Trevino, who competed internationally in athletics, is a tremendous athlete's advocate and was one of 2015 BID team's great volunteers. And Courtney and I actually crossed paths yeah, back in high school. We both played on our high school basketball teams. And uh, for what I remember back in those days, he was someone who I certainly didn't want to cover on that basketball court. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you for working with him, putting this team together, and for doing such a spectacular job. Today, we're also joined by several of Toronto 2015's spot partners. Representatives from Infrastructure Ontario, Merck's, Waterfront Toronto, and Tourism Toronto are here will work to ensure that you have the information and the introductions that you need to connect with the processes and the opportunities presented by the games. You should also know that our efforts certainly don't end today. We are committed to keeping information flowing to small businesses, particularly those linked to the ethnic, cultural, Aboriginal, Métis communities uh, that are so important for the entire Toronto 2015 plan and the experience. In fact, we have a vision of making these games a catalyst for the development of the diverse business community by building expertise and building connections. At the same time, we're challenging our own organization to develop in a way that ensures diversity is infused in every aspect of our business. But before I tell you more about our organization, I should probably tell you a little bit about the Pan American Games. Pan Am Games will be twice the size of the Vancouver Olympics, twice the size. Both games were 17 days long, but Vancouver had nine competitive venues and 20 sports. In comparison, our plan includes more than 50 competition and training venues and 48 sports. The Vancouver Games brought 7,000 athletes and officials to BC. Toronto 2015 brings 10,000 to Ontario. And our games will trigger 15,000 jobs and attract at least 250,000 tourists. Now actually, 
Courtney's raised that number to 500,000 today on CBC Morning Radio. So I think we should go for the one million even mark. What do you think, Courtney? Let's go for it. <laughs> it certainly should be a great opportunity. Our budget is $1.4 billion. Now that includes $700 million for upgraded and newly constructed sport venues like the Stadium, Velodrome, Aquatic Center, and the Sports Institute. There's also the Athletes' Village on the West Donlands. Infrastructure Ontario is managing the venue construction process of all our bills, and Waterfront Toronto is developing the village. The other $700 million of our budget is allocated to operations, which covers everything from running the organization and staging the games. Think of it as everything from furniture to food, from transport to telecom. Our games are big, and our games are important. And our games will trigger the economic activity beginning today and running to 2015. This business will build as our organization evolves. Since Toronto 2015 was formed in December, we have made excellent progress on a number of fronts. For example, we're completing our venue verification process, which assesses the requirements to build or renovate the game's venues. We expect to break ground on our new facilities beginning in late 2011. We also have the Toronto 2015 senior management team in place, which makes me sleep a lot easier at night. They're up to speed and they're working on operational plans. Several are here today, and please make sure you take a moment to introduce yourself and get to know them better. We've reached another critical milestone. We're reaching another critical milestone in a couple of weeks. On September 29th, we launch our new games brand and start to reach out to sponsors to promote this very unique event. To a significant extent, the Toronto 2015 brand will grow from our game's vision, which is to use the power of sport, the power of sport to engage, to inspire, and transform our community. To accomplish this, we have to put on an exceptional athletic sporting event. We also need to energize our cities and our neighborhoods by mobilizing our communities, in particular, our diverse communities. A cornerstone of Toronto 2015 will be connecting and celebrating the cultures, the art, music, and talents of the 42 nations of the Americas and the Caribbean. This will make Toronto 2015 a vibrant cultural festival as well. These will be our games, all of us. We can sh all shape this event as enthusiastic volunteers, gracious hosts, and ardent supporters. In addition, we can all participate in the economic impact that this event will bring. Today, today we will share important information, but also look to you to provide advice and suggestions because this is an ongoing process and your feedback will and is always important to us. When we're done, the games organization and operation will reflect the diversity of our region and the diversity of the games participants. Of course, stating a goal is easy. Delivering results is challenging. In simplest terms, we are working to ensure that this is a place for small businesses in the Pan American Games, that this is a place where small businesses can thrive in the Pan American Games. We want to help you get involved and find partners. To be frank, it's smart business for us, and it will be essential to ensure we can declare the Games a true success. Now, I'll be judging the success of these games on three primary points. One, it must be a stellar athletic competition which inspires and engages the imagination. Two, 
This must be the cultural event for our community, an event of a generation. We must all engage and celebrate the cultures of our community and the 42 Pan Am nations. And three, this event must bring lasting economic impact, which is broadly felt. Toronto 2015 will incorporate diversity in all our operations. I can tell you that this approach is already in action and we've made early progress. First, we will be transparent. With events like today, we're creating a level playing field for businesses of all sizes to build on opportunities. We're doing this by providing information and clarity so you can feel informed and linked in. Information and knowledge is power. Second, we're incorporating our partners. Together, we'll give you a complete picture to ensure processes for issuing tenders, sourcing and hiring are all accessible and user-friendly. Third, we're creating an environment which specifically stakes out a place for diversity. We're building a coalition with the Toronto business communities that will create grassroots support for the games. And importantly, and importantly, we're doing it now, five years before the games. So you can plan and you can prepare and be in a position to respond to the opportunities as they arise, and arise they will. Diversity is also embedded in our policies. Toronto 2015 is working with partners like Career Edge and Maytree, organizations dedicated to advancing the careers of our diverse community. On another front, our CFO is working on a transparent procurement process, and we'll be using a diversity statement in our request for proposals and supplier certification procedures. This means that we'll build diversity into our criteria for evaluating supplier submissions. Organizations will get points for demonstrating a commitment to diversity within their own organization and within their supply chains as well. Now, this is just a start. In a few months' time, we'll have a robust diversity framework that supports our goal of providing an opportunity for everyone, for everyone to win through the Pan Am Games. And as I said, to achieve this goal, we need you. I hope you're attracted by the economic potential, and I also hope you can be acting as a springboard for broader community participation in all aspects of the games. If you, your businesses, your families, and your neighborhoods respond, we'll stage not only a wonderful event, but one which provides new opportunities to our communities on so many levels. This will showcase our community at its very best, but it only can be accomplished when we all work together. Thank you.